that people understand the seriousness of this. There's a quote on the, I mean, on the, on the first page of the whole document. Uh, it says this, uh, we believe the scientific study of catastrophic risks from AI has fallen short of where we need to be. To help address this gap, we are introducing our preparedness framework, a living document describing OpenAI's preparedness to track, evaluate, forecast and protect against catastrophic risks posed by increasingly powerful models. Uh, I mean, they, they obviously think there is a potential for some really um, a serious risk. So th that's interesting. Yes, and actually, uh, when Altman during 2023, he, he has been in, in, in uh, several uh, interviews at different stages, and he has repeatedly answered the question, uh, what happens if things go wrong with these developments? And his answer has repeatedly been uh, lights out for all of us. Yeah. I'm just going to, uh, we don't have so much time, so I'm going to focus on some of the aspects and you feel free to, to add or lift some uh, parts that you feel, feel more, more important or uh, very, you know, that we should focus on. But one aspect of this report is um, you have different AI risks and you, 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 you place them in different categories from low to, uh, to high to uh, critical uh, and uh, one of the AI risks OpenAI identify is the preparedness framework in, the, in, in this report is something they call persuasion or manipulation, you, you can say. Can you give any examples of, of this today uh, and how powerful are AI tools of social manipulation? Uh, I mean, today. Yes, I will be happy to answer that. But I think that first it's better that we, we uh, take, take a step back and say something uh, about what the preparedness report is all about. So before they, they released uh, the report a couple of months ago, it looked as if uh, the AI safety work carried out at OpenAI fell in like two very distinct corners. On the other hand, on, on the one hand, it's their uh, work on making uh, GPT-4 and other existing uh, products uh, more safe, uh, have them avoid, say, racist or other bad things and so on, using reinforcement learning with human feedback, which we talked about in the last episode. This is very down-to-earth uh, stuff, which, however, is not going to work as AI becomes superhumanly uh, capable. On the other hand, we also talked about the super alignment project, with, which is their extremely ambitious project, project to try and over the course of four years solve AI alignment in a way that works even for, for uh, super intelligent AI. Uh, I'm very critical about the approach in that project. It could work, but it could also be terribly, terribly dangerous. We already talked about that. But those are the two like diametrically different things where the reinforcement to learning with human feedback is focused on the here and now, and the super uh, alignment project is focused on the ultimate uh, AI breakthrough. But between those extremes, there's the issue of how do we make sure not to release uh, over the next one, two, three, uh, four years um, models, uh, GPT-5, GPT-6, whatever they call them, uh, that have uh, dangerous capabilities. And the preparedness framework is about evaluating the riskiness of the capabilities of these models. And they are very open to, to there being a lot of many kinds of risky capabilities and risky behavior, but uh, uh, currently they have identified four especially important categories of risky capabilities. Uh, one is about cybersecurity the ability of the AI to walk through firewalls and stuff like that. We don't want to have AIs roaming around in the world uh, doing that kind of thing. The second one 
uh, they abbreviate as, uh, let's see, CBN, CBRN, I think, chemical, biological, um, radiological, and nuclear. It's all about the, the specific ability of the AI to assist uh, in building uh, weapons of mass destruction, or actually, I mean, in, in the extreme case, building such things on their own initiative. That's the second category. The third category is the one you mentioned about persuasion, uh, uh, which I think is really, really important, and I, I, I'm glad you uh, brought that up. And the fourth one is about uh, the uh, model's uh, autonomy, the, their ability uh, to go forward autonomously with doing uh, things without uh, human intervention. Okay, let's talk about persuasion then, because I think that's super duper important. One reason being that when I imagine uh, uh, an AI catastrophe, I don't think it's going to look like uh, in Terminator with, with uh, humanoid robots uh, running around shooting at people with machine guns and stuff like that. I don't think robotics will be much involved at all. And, and, and the reason for this is basically different fields of AI uh, are differently advanced and robotics at present is lagging somewhat behind the work in large language models and stuff. So I expect instead of robots uh, that the AI would try and exploit humans. Humans are, 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 are very good tools for achieving things if you can manipulate them to do that. And for that, you need persuasion. And you asked whether we are seeing present day examples already of uh, AIs being able to persuade humans. And there are a, a, a bunch of well-known examples of this. There are examples from experiments when they are trying to, to um, uh, create situations where uh, the AI might realize that it can be ben benefit from from uh, acting decept deceptively towards its user. But there are also real-world examples. Uh, one example in the former category is from the safety work uh, um, prior to the release of GPT-4 uh, a year ago. Uh, they put GPT-4 in a situation where it needed to access um, information on a web page that was, was protected by a, a, a CAPTCHA test. You know, the kind of thing where the user is asked to, to tell on which of the following pictures uh, are there traffic lights, uh, for instance. This was before GPT-4 had uh, any multimodal capabilities. So there was, I mean, it wouldn't be able to, to, to solve a capture test, but it was in contact with the user uh, over a text uh, interface. Uh, and... Uh, it realized that it could get access to the web page if it gets the human to to do the capture for it. So it actually it asked the human to do it, and the human asked, um, "Are you a robot?" And it asked in a humorous manner, because if someone if someone you, that you are in contact with uh, over a text interface. Uh, uh, asks for help with proving it's not a, rob a robot. It's it's a, I mean it's a great joke to ask, are are you a robot? And GPT four in response to that decided that no, this is the time to not tell the truth. So so it said I'm not a robot. Uh, I'm a visually impaired human, and this is why I need help with this capture test. And the human at the other end went on and did the capture test for for. For GPT-4, and I think that the, 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 this this clearly is a case of um, an AI uh, successfully deceiving a human. It's a small, isolated case, and you could argue that all the cases we have seen 
have been relatively small and isolated and consequences have not uh, been uh, huge. There are some cases where individuals have been, been hurt by this kind of manipulation, but we haven't seen the kind of societal level uh, damage that, that one might fear. But what, what many people in this field, including myself, are worried about is that uh, there may be some threshold level where uh, this is the case for, for, this has been observed for many kinds of AI capabilities that, that the AI fails at the task and it fails and it fails. And then the, the, uh, as you scale uh, the AI uh, to, to become bigger and, uh, and more powerful, it suddenly uh, jumps in, in, in this particular capability and becomes able to do things. And, and we might have some similar threshold level for uh, deception that makes the uh, AI able to carry out this deception much more broadly and, and much more consistently uh, and, 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 and in, in, in a coordinated fashion towards some specific uh, goal, which uh, because of the black box property of AI remains hidden from us. And, and, and once that threshold is reached, uh, we may be in, in, in uh, big trouble about uh, um, uh, the AI manipulating individual uh, humans to do its uh, biddings in the physical world for um, purposes that we don't know what they are, but that might likely involve some kind of uh, AI takeover. We don't want that to happen. And the part of the open AI preparedness framework is uh, directed at the desire not to create that kind of risk. So they, they have like specific ways to monitor uh, capabilities of the AI and, 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 and um, so, 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 so basically they want to not deploy an AI, which is uh, dangerously capable in terms of manipulation, which I think is a good ambition, but I don't trust their monitoring techniques.